I remember at the phone call, uh, I think I'd been in the hospital for a few days and uh, things weren't looking good. And um, I was preparing to be intubated. At that point, I was out of my mind, but I remember just hearing my mom's voice. I think I was maybe trying to call to tell her bye, uh, but she wasn't hearing it. And so my mom, she started singing worship, and it stirred something up into me to fight. So the louder she got, the louder I got. And the more intense she got, the more intense I got. And from that moment, I knew I was going to fight for my life. So when Josh was about four, maybe five years old, uh, there was an incident that was very traumatic with um, the car. My husband was backing out. We thought all the children were inside the house, and it turned out Joshua was not. And so um, honestly, I am not sure what alerted us, but, but thank the Lord he stopped and we discovered that Josh had been knocked down by the car. Um, and so we, we truly were in panic mode. We were actually terrified. Uh, we, we grabbed him, picked him up to kind of check to make sure that he actually wasn't run over, had dirt on his face and everything, but he was all right. Um, however, we did take him to the hospital uh, to get him checked out to make sure, you know, all was well with him, but just a few minor scrapes and bruises. But we did notice a change in Joshua. We noticed um, him beginning to sing praise to God, beginning to clap. And he was just, um, he, he was just different. He was different uh, as a little boy after that traumatic experience. Mulberry Baptist Church, yeah, well, I think was the first, was my first church. But I, I remember just the, you know, the uh, hand clapping, stomping your feet, like the wood floors. You know, um, everyone kind of joining in and being a part of like the music experience and the worship experience. Worship is the way that we fight, you know, our battles. But especially when you're in a congregation and you're with brothers and sisters lifting up their voices, um, speaking the truth of God together is just powerful. Because you think about what one voice does, but when you have, when you're surrounded by um, all those voices declaring and believing you know, it's powerful and, and God shows up. You know, I love that God calls us a body. And just like a body, the Bible says when one part suffers, the whole body suffers. And we have a fellow staff member, a fellow co-laborer in Christ, Joshua Norwood, who is our Saddleback South Bay worship director. And he's suffering. I know so many of you have been praying for him and believing for his healing and he is still fighting for his life in the ICU. The reality is the ventilator that he's on is, is doing most of the work. And although COVID has passed and he's, he's overcome COVID, the virus has left his lungs and some other organs weak and they're not responding the way that, that they need to. And so we're gonna pray. We're gonna unite our faith tonight and we are going to believe for healing on behalf of our brother, Joshua. Basically the doctors were saying uh, that he had a, well, no, the, the way it was told to me that the way that Joshua had contracted and was reacting to COVID 
it was a 90% mortality rate to it, which basically they gave him a 10% chance to live. Um, as a father, you know, that's a little disconcerting to hear. Um, now, while I don't sing <laughs> like Josh and um, his mother, um, you know, at my core, I'm a worshiper as well. And I, I didn't know, and I, and I think if there was one thing I wanted, um, basically, really, even in my coming today after Josh asked, is that, um, you know, I didn't know what God was going to do, but I knew God was sovereign. And so with that, I just determined to um, really focus in on what the Lord would say about the situation. So the truths of the matter and not the facts of the matter. And it's not whether that I didn't disinvolve facts. It's just that I chose to believe the report of the Lord. You know, this morning when I was praying for him, I felt compelled to speak Daniel 3 over him and his situation. And it says in verses 26 and 27, it says, the Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire hadn't even touched them. Not a hair on their heads was singed and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell of smoke. They didn't even smell of smoke. God, you are the only one who can. And so we cry out to you and we ask you that you will. Will you? Will you? Will you touch his body? And will he walk out of this not even smelling like smoke in Jesus' name? Some of the things that were interesting to me was that uh, even though I couldn't, it's weird. I had an awareness of certain things without necessarily knowing, but like I knew my dad was there and I could sense him fighting and praying for me. Another story if I can share. Uh, there's a, a, one of our volunteers, she really wanted to bring a radio um, up to his room because he's just sitting there and there's like no sound, there's no music, there's, it's just, you know, machines, a ventilator just, um, so we wanted to send him, she had an idea to send him some music and some songs because she wanted to hear, um, you know, worship. That's, that's who he is. And so they wouldn't allow anything at, at first. And so she actually brought in a radio, her own radio, and she was just at the bottom of the hospital crying because she couldn't go and bring up this radio to him. And so this, this doctor actually passes by her and asks her, what are, you, what are you doing? And she explains that she has this friend church member and, and he's in the hospital fighting COVID and he, she wants to bring this radio and, and they won't let her. And so the doctor says, well, let, let me talk to them. And he is actually a, a doctor on that floor. And so he was actually able to bring her up to the floor and talk to the nurses and convince the nurses to allow them to bring that uh, her radio. And then from that on, we brought in an, I, um, an iPod or um, and just MP3 music and of him singing and other worship songs from Saddleback. And, other, other worship songs from other places. So it was just like, at least that room was filled with worship. Weird enough to know like, oh, you know, that's like, that's Mama Sean's voice. Like, you know, that's Timory singing, that's myself singing. Um, my band, you know, so there was like acknowledge of, um, of that, but what it did, it kept me in a state of worship. It kept me in a state of knowing that God was with me. And the Lord was definitely speaking to me, you know, during that time. And I, I wrote down some of those things just so that I would, you know, always have it um, for myself. Um, but uh, yeah, there was just a mixture of in times when I was getting anxious, he would just tell me that he was with me, you know. Um, and I think for me, I knew I was going to be okay. Actually, going through it was like he reaffirmed that I was going to be okay, but it, that was just, you know, part of the process. So um, that's kind of what was happening, kind of like while I was kind of out of it. But when I 
woke up and just heard about all the prayers and um, just all the support, like, you know, Timmy's prayer and just for how the church, you know, really rallied around and fought for me. You know, I'm, I will forever be grateful. And I, I think I was very humbled that um, just to know that I mattered that much to people. Every Friday evening, there was a prayer vigil, and they were intentional to do that until Josh came out of ICU. Um, but during one of those prayer vigils, um, there was an a, a elderly lady um, that came up with her family. I don't know what her issue was, but, but clearly she was ill. And so we were in the circle praying, um, and she, she wanted to be a part of that. And so, you know, they, we stopped and actually ministered to her and prayed for her. And from what I understand, she did give her life uh, to the Lord during that whole situation. And, and that was something that, that we felt. While, yes, it was about Josh, we knew it was bigger than Josh. Lord, only you can. And what the enemy has stolen, we, we declare that he must repay sevenfold. In Jesus' name, Josh will sing again. Josh will live and not die. In Jesus' name, he will live and not die. He will live and not die. Josh will sing again. And we all say, amen. He is alive and well. He's still moving. He's still healing. It just made me feel like what I was going through was worth it to a degree. And that God was using it, you know. Because when you are um, are suffering, sometimes it's easy just to kind of get kind of lost in the suffering. Um, but I think it reminded me that God was at work and that it wasn't in vain and that he was using it for his glory. And ultimately that's, you know, all I want. And so I think when I heard those stories, it kind of helped to refocus my mind on um, the greater purpose. So like I said, I will always forever be grateful for Saddleback. Um, and I think in a day and age where a lot of times we forsake like the local church, you know, assembling together, to me, this is just a powerful reminder of how important the body is and how important it is to be connected um, to a local community of believers that are able to hold you up and to pray for you and support and support each other, like in especially times like this. Praise for who he is. Our God, he's alive and well.